Yeah, hello everybody and greetings from my colleague Sandra Bengers. Um, many thanks for the opportunity to present our latest research on the topic Determining Sustainable Transition Paths Using a Multi-Stakeholder Decision Support System uh, here at the MIT Applied Energy uh, Symposium. My name is Florian Siegmann and I work at the Institute for System Analysis and Technology Evaluation at the Institute of Energy and Climate Research of the Forschungszentrum Jülich in Germany. And I would like to start this presentation by introducing you to the context in which our research is embedded and then guide you through our approach of utilizing MCDA as a method to identify sustainable transformation trajectories, um, focusing on the conceptual approach here. Okay, let's start. So uh, I assume most of you have seen the slide before, and don't worry, I'm not planning to spend too much time on that. But uh, what I would like to point out is that when we talk about sustainability, we usually refer to the SDGs as a framework the international community agreed upon, and yeah, which can serve as a guiding point for activities in research and policy. And uh, yeah, an essential part of the internet transformation is to reduce reliance on fossil resources and sectors such as energy and agriculture. Um, but what is often less obvious here is uh, what these actually mean when we want to implement them in the regional or local context. And as part of the Energiewende and the Climate X strategy, uh, Germany is currently confronted with the transformation of the Rheinische Revier. And that includes two concurrent national policies, namely the uh, phase out of coal energy and the national bioeconomy strategy. And in uh, this connection, the advisory body, the uh, so called Coal Commission, recommended the implementation of a sustainable bioeconomy as a guiding concept for the structural change in the region. And the yeah, the Rensch Revier represents a very interesting example. Uh, it is uh, Europe's largest connected nickelite uh, deposit and therefore they are strongly affected by these two uh, trends in the region. And yeah, transforming a region that's historically shaped by lignite mining to a sustainable bioeconomy uh, leads to a complex implementation process and yeah, requires transformations of major um, existing resource systems, value networks, supply chain, uh, but also governance systems. And uh, yeah, this is also reflected in the high number and variety of stakeholders affected by, but also engaging with this transformation process. Um, so yeah, here it's not a surprise that the Coal Commission also highlighted the need to, uh, for developing policy instruments to support um, this policy-driven structural change. Because in contrast to several other transformation processes, the case here is mainly driven by policy and yeah, less caused by a market pull or a technology push. And yeah, previous uh, experience in the context of the energy when they illustrated that um, yeah, historically rooted conflicting objectives um, uh, influence decision making and its outcome over time. And yeah, questions concerning the right balance of environmental protection and the use of resources, um, be it fossil uh, or bio-based, um, yeah, are essentially political and uh, societal in their nature. And uh, they affect a group, uh, a large group of people. And uh, yeah, that implies uh, that uh, any um, yeah any way to address that uh, needs to deal with the variety of opinions of what is socially desirable. And um, yeah, decisions we make as a group here are fundamentally different to decisions we would do as an, uh, would take as an individual. Yeah, therefore, it's reasonable to uh, assume that decisions concerning future transformation paths will be uh, contentious, and yeah, need to consider divergent uh, value systems. But on the other hand, it also opens up a window of opportunity to pursue this transformation and leave historically grown path dependencies. And yeah, as I mentioned, uh, the bioeconomy has, an, uh, has become an important guiding concept and that not just in Germany. Um, but yeah, what is the bioeconomy? And uh, for the um, German Bioeconomy Council, it is defined as the knowledge based production and utilization of biological resources to provide products, processes and services in all sectors of trade and industry within the framework of a sustainable economic system. And yeah, although well, there are several other definitions out there varying, um, emphasizing varying aspects of uh, our sectors. And what we can find is that most understandings of uh, bioeconomy capture three different underlying visions. And the first one is the biotechnology one, uh, which emphasizes an understanding based on research, development, and application of biotechnology. Um, yeah, for instance, to increase energy productivity. Um, next, there is the bioresource vision, uh, which is centered around production and conversion of biomass and biogenic resources to substitute fossil resources. 
and uh, a third one, uh, bioecology. And yeah, here the focus lies on biodiversity promotion and yeah, ecosystem uh, uh, conservation. And yeah, this distinction will be very useful uh, for the later assignment of criteria during the application of the uh, developed uh, multi criteria decision analysis approach, um, yeah, which I will introduce later in this presentation. So what do we know about social transformation processes? Um, first of all, we do need the appropriate technology, um, but that's not the whole story since techno-economically optimal solutions are rarely ever um, realized in exactly that manner. And we further know that stakeholder discourses and power constellations have a severe influence on decision-making processes and yeah, that involved stakeholders act upon their uh, subjective perceptions and interests. Um, so when you try to develop transformation pathways and decide which one to pursue, um, it leads to a complex decision-making process that is determined by the stakeholders dynamic interplay and yeah, needs to incorporate economic, social and environmental considerations, uh, which can be uh, often conflicting objectives in that sense. Um, for the intended transformation in the Orange Revier, that means uh, we need to understand how the involved stakeholders perceive these changes, like uh, what are their interests, uh, what determines which plant a farmer will grow in the coming years, or whether or not they will adapt to new technologies. Um, or, on the other hand, um, what effect is, uh, citizens will associate with a sustainable transformation. And yes, yeah, you can imagine a uh, transformation of that scale will have considerable effects on other aspects in the region as well. So, yeah, how are we going to address this challenge? Um, obviously, I'm not doing all of that uh, on my own, but as part uh, of the project uh, Transform to Bio. And yeah, I don't want to go into detail here, but uh, since uh, my daily work is embedded in this project and tries to synthesize uh, different working packages here, um, yeah, it's kind of essential to give a, a quick overview here. Um, yeah, so briefly summarize the working package one addresses the effects between global developments and their regional, national, as well as economic and political effects. Work package two evaluates the stakeholders and behavioral considerations. And yeah, as an output, it's planned that they deliver the stakeholder profiles, uh, profiles um, together with weight decision criteria. Um, the modeling approaches in work package three um, serve to identify a set of feasible transformation trajectories. You can think of them as scenarios. And uh, yeah, those are uh, integrating global as well as local developments. And yeah, I'm currently working on a work package four. And uh, here the idea is to use a multi-stakeholder MCA approach to synthesize the outcome of work package two and three so that the stakeholders' per, uh, perceptions will explicitly feed into the development and choice of the following, uh, following governance measures. And yeah, on the right side here, you can see an overview of which aspects are intended to be integrated. And yeah, using the multi-stakeholder, uh, multi-criteria decision analysis approach, it is the name to identify transformation pathways that are desirable from a sustainability perspective, feasible from a techno-economical perspective, but also acceptable from a stakeholder consensus perspective. Yeah, to perform our MCDA approach, we need certain key components. And those include a goal, uh, which is the yeah, future state of what we're aiming to achieve, and it should be measurable and realistic. Further, we need criteria which yeah, illustrate the measurement of achievement of our goal, and yeah, they are uh, specified by related attributes. And next, uh, we require weights, and uh, those allow for integrating the decision maker's subjective perspective. And yeah, we have uh, several methods available for determining um, the criteria weighting, and I will introduce our approach during the upcoming slides. Additionally, uh, we need, uh, need to define alternatives, and those are the options for solving our decision problem. And yeah, in our case, uh, those are represented by the different transformation pathways and must be described with the relevant features. And yeah, last but not least, uh, we need a suitable method as an evaluation model to reflect the decision maker's perspective and rank the alternatives from best to worst. To develop the indicator framework for the uh, consecutive evaluation, we followed a four-step systematic selection approach. And the first requirement is that the respective indicator is part of the global SDG framework while the second requirement demands a clear connection to the bioeconomy. And the link to the bioeconomy can, uh, can be identified building up on work conducted by uh, Charlie Joglu and Bodansky that uh, connected the principles of a sustainable bioeconomy as published by the FAO of the United Nations um, to the sustainable development goals. And the next condition is that the indicator has been included within the German sustainability strategy and yeah, lastly, it needs to be relevant for the Rheinische Revier. 
an indicator related to maritime protection, for instance, um, would not be considered. Uh, yeah, for a landlocked uh, region like the Range Revier, that uh, would not be relevant in that sense. So, yeah, uh, overall, uh, for an indicator to be considered within the indicator framework, it needs to fulfill these requirements. Following this procedure, we were able to break down the 231 unique indicators contained within the global SDG framework and the 72 within the German sustainability strategy down to 20. And yeah, the remaining 20 uh, indicators were then mapped along the three bioeconomy visions uh, introduced earlier in this presentation according to their respective properties. Yeah, and thereby we were able uh, to develop an indicator system that is rooted in a strong normative foundation of the SDGs, the principles of a sustainable bioeconomy as laid out by the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and the German Sustainability Strategy. Um, yeah, it uh, entails indicators associated with uh, overall 12 SDGs and yeah, results in a balanced representation of the classical um, sustainability dimensions, uh, namely economic, social and environmental, as well as the bioeconomy visions commonly perceived by stakeholders. And yeah, besides that, uh, since numerous countries globally adopted national sustainability strategies themselves, um, the conceptual approach laid out here um, yeah, could prove to be useful uh, for regions facing similar transitions. Um, to develop a goal hierarchy for the integration of these uh, subjective stakeholder perceptions, we extracted nine core indicators along the free bioeconomy visions. And yeah, based on that, we developed a survey. And yeah, the way of proceeding here was to use the pairwise comparison approach and ask stakeholders to compare the relevance of certain aspects of the transformation from their perspective. Um, yeah, for instance, we ask what they consider as more important, increased public and private spending on R&D or a higher share of renewable energy sources um, uh, within the electricity mix, or whether they regard both aspects as equally important. The stakeholders then uh, compare the criteria via linguistic terms within each dimension, as well among the three dimensions illustrated by the bioeconomy visions. And to account for the fact that people are often not able to express their preferences precisely, we can translate the linguistic terms into a triangular for the numbers um, using the related membership functions. And yeah, as of now, we are still collecting data. And yeah, the main uh, intention uh, is to explore how the model performs on the real work conditions. Um, but what we can see here is that the input we collected from stakeholders associated uh, with the group uh, of government and political actors tend to consider aspects of the technology dimension as more important, uh, whereas we can see a rather balanced evaluation within the stakeholder group's research, uh, as well as industry and commerce. And yeah, should this uh, trend continue, it would correspond with our observations during uh, focus group work should be conducted before, as well as also um, literature-based analysis we have uh, performed uh, prior to this. Yeah, and on this slide, uh, we can see how the different parts we've seen so far uh, can be merged into the overall group decision support system. Uh, here in red, we can see the goal, which will be the final group ranking of the transformation pathways, and yeah, which will then be uh, the potential compromise solution. In green, we can find uh, the criteria uh, within the evaluation metrics of each individual stakeholder. And in blue, the part where we can integrate the weights to illustrate the importance of the respective criteria as determined using the uh, fuzzy HP approach uh, before. And they are the yellow section um, in which the transformation trajectories will be integrated as soon as we uh, yeah, conclude the quantification process we are currently working on. And the alternatives will then be assessed along the respective criteria and weights. And yeah, lastly, uh, the method uh, section, which basically encloses the overall approach. And yeah, to uh, wrap things up, uh, we think it is important to consider uh, subjective stakeholder perceptions and societal transformation processes. Yeah, since they, they have a notable influence on uh, related decision making processes. And yeah, in this connection, the developed multi stakeholder MCDA approach can generate uh, insights of how the affected parties perceive the ongoing transformation. And yeah, beyond that, uh, we think that transparency is a very important aspect in environmental decision making and the an understanding of uh, how determinants uh, are uh, identified can actually contribute to a constructive discussion between the involved parties. And yeah, besides that, we hope that by understanding how this transformation process here in the uh, Rheinische Revier as a model region works, 
um, we will also be able to extract uh, valuable insights that can be useful for uh, regions um, facing similar transitions. And yeah, lastly, uh, it is important to note that approaches, approaches based on MCDA are not intended to prescribe a solution to a given problem, um, but rather the intention is to support um, the decision-making process and enable people to make an informed decision. And here I selected a few references in case you would like to dig deeper into the topic. And yeah, with that, I'm at the end of my presentation. Many thanks for your attention and to the organizing team for making this event possible. And yeah, now I'm looking forward to an interesting discussion. Thank you.